You can control what happens in the greenhouse, but at certain level, you can control the sun or you can control Mother Nature. Here in Canada, the environment is changing drastically. We start having more wildfires early in the season, and because of that, we have less light, we have more humid conditions, and we have more like hot days, and that affects the plants a lot. So I think that as a grower, the perfect media will be something that is reusable, free of bacteria or diseases or pests. In that way, you just recycle the media and you don't create any more environmental problems in the world. There is so much stuff happening right now that, well, you want to be the most environmental friendly possible. There has been very little innovation in this space for the last 50 years. In our business, we've always had to be open to new ideas and new technology. And if we don't, we may not be here in a few years. It's a transformational product because we actually are the only substrate that is reused and recycled. You use it, then you send it being clean, disinfected, and then come back again and I use it again. The way our product is made is the very specific species of bamboo is sourced from Mexico, where it is also pyrolysized or charred. It arrives at our facility in Red Deer County, Alberta. It is then sized, goes through our treatment tanks, and that is our secret sauce. That's where the transformation happens that makes it the only carbon in the world to sustain plant life. If you look at what you can grow in the carbon, it's more or less what can't you grow in carbon. Our charged carbon is ideally suited to grow tomatoes and cucumbers, peppers, strawberries, leafy greens, and microgreens. So uh, here's our first test, growing some long English cucumbers and some kale on the other side with it. Farmers know that they need to make a change and are looking for something different. Initially, I was uh, quite skeptical because you see ideas come and go. And to this point, uh, yeah, I've been kind of pleasantly surprised. For what we've seen so far, the roots look very healthy compared to the other substrates. So far, so good, for sure. You know, this is very competitive market. You need to produce good tomatoes at the cheapest price, environmentally friendly. Consumers no longer sit back and just say, oh, man, it doesn't really matter what happens in the world of the environment. No, they are scrutinizing everything. From the way Pure Life Carbon manages forests through reforestation projects of jaguar reserves that have been burned down by poachers, to the way that we actually are using leading edge pyrolysis technology, we are creating carbon credits through our entire process. So my former boss told me, Gabriel, there is this substract, you want to see it, you want to try it. I was, okay, let's read it. So I was start reading. I have some questions, we have a couple of meetings with the people in Pure Life Carbon and then I say, okay, you know what, let's try it. So right now we are in the third week of the trial. As you can see, the plants are developing, but in two months, they will be as high as that crop wire that is three meters high. We all face the same problem. If you're a grower, trying to grow profitably, put some money in your genes and trying to grow in an eco-friendly way. This isn't restricted to Canada, Great Britain, the United States, you name it, it's worldwide. Everybody is looking at this and how do we catch up? And we're here to get the world caught up. This substract, this carbon is kind of a panacea, it's something that didn't exist before. I know some people will be afraid to try it, but it will solve many issues environmentally and will be good for the world. And if the plants grow well, well, good for the plants.